This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 12, on the 7th of June 2013. Great, so I'm here at the World uh, uh, Creator Summit with uh, Sean Peace. Uh, he's uh, the CEO and founder of uh, the Royalty Exchange. So hi and uh, welcome to, to uh, the show here at the Creator Summit. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. It's going great. We're happy to be here and certainly learning a lot from the conference. Absolutely. And uh, uh, so first of all, I want to ask you, uh, what is Royalty Exchange? In a nutshell, what do you guys do? Yeah, sure. So what we do is we allow anyone that has a royalty interest uh, to be able to slice that royalty interest up into a percentage. And then we help them package that up into a clear and transparent way so that we can put it on our marketplace. And once it's on the marketplace, then investors can come and bid on those royalty streams. Um, so it offers the, the seller a very competitive way to get the most that they can for the value of the asset that they're selling. Yeah. So you've been compared in a way to a stock mar market for, for copyrights in, in the way that, uh, that uh, you know, people can exchange and, and sell parts of their copyright or, or the totality of, of a track or a catalog of songs, for example. So uh, can you give me like a practical example of how a songwriter, for example, would use a service? Yeah, sure. So what's great from a songwriter perspective is that um, they might need some liquidity to do something else, whether it's uh, we've had songwriters who have invested in their son's college education. We've had them invest in new equipment so that they can stay up to date. Um, and then some just need some liquidity for, for whatever reason. So uh, what's great from a songwriter perspective or any a royalty owner perspective is they're in complete control. Uh, so they can decide, do I want to sell performance or mechanicals? Uh, they can decide what percentage of their songs or a song or a couple of songs. Um, and we don't affect the copyright. So, uh, so they continue to, to have ownership of the copyright. Uh, they set re the reserve price, so uh, they decide how much they're willing to get for it. Um, and if it doesn't sell at that price, then of course there's no sale and no cost to them, as long as there wasn't any cost involved to package it up. Um, so we really offer songwriters flexibility and the ability to get the most that they can for the asset that they've sold. Because in the in the past, they haven't had that luxury. It's been a couple buyers that they could go and try and solicit it to, so there was no competition. And we're opening up a whole group of investors internationally as well as nationally um, to come and compete for these uh, royalty streams. And how do you help... Uh, uh uh, potential, uh, you know, songwriters uh, or, or rights holders that would like to sell rights on, on your site to uh, figure out a fair market value for their song. Of course, you know, you don't want to end up in a situation where uh, a songwriter is selling a, a track for less than what it's worth, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to make sure that they maximize uh, that particular sale because, of course, it means giving up that portion of the track or that track for the entirety of the, of the lifetime of the copyright. So uh, so how, how do you help them do that? Well, so uh, as we get larger, we'll have a lot more data points. So a lot of it right now is, is very empirical, um, but we have a range. So we would say, you know, a, a multiple might be a range between six and seven or seven and eight, depending on the type of royalty that they're selling. Is it mechanicals? Well, that's probably going to die off a little bit sooner. Performance, of course, is going to last a lot longer. Um, so we'll give them a range. But ultimately, what's nice is, one, they get to set what they feel the value is at, even though we'll give them uh, some support in that. And then what the other aspect is it is that the investors really set kind of what the what the level is um, so right now it's it's more of a collaborative effort and I think as we get more and more data points it'll be a much more linear type of a process and does it work in the same way for investors as well so if they decide they want to sell for example the part the, the piece of the copyright that they've, they've purchased can they do that already yeah sure so they can take whatever they've bought and resell it back in the into the marketplace a real interesting thing that we're getting ready to, to launch probably in the next uh, 12 months is the ability to take a large catalog of songs and actually carve that up into units. So royalty units will actually act more like stock and then you'll be able to have investors who can buy in for say a thousand dollars or hundred dollars a unit as opposed to spending fifty or a hundred or three hundred thousand dollars to get in and we think that'll be a lot more interesting not only for the investor because now you can spread your money across multiple genres or you know multiple types of uh, royalties uh, and have a lot more fun kind of buying and selling and, and waiting for those returns to come in. Sure. And uh, do you feel your investors are really 
researching the, the music space in, in the sense that uh, so much is changing uh, on, on the way the copyrights are explo exploited and there is a potential for uh, far larger revenues on, on specific types of rights, uh, especially on the digital space. And so what are your investors looking for and are they really looking into specifics of what their potential returns are going to be? I would say that our investors probably are not investigating the music space as much as we might think. I think right now there is such a flight for from capital from the stock market uh, that people are just looking for stable income streams and um, these offer a, a unique alternative investment for them. So, um, so I wouldn't say that um, that we of course we try and provide as much information about you know how how performance royalties are doing and mechanicals and give them as much information as possible. But I wouldn't say that uh, you know they're going to the extent to become experts in that field. I think they're kind of relying on the information that we provide them to help guide them uh, in in what's the right investment or what the right payment should be. Sure. And then going forward with the, with the company, uh, so how are you planning to expand it and uh, bring more writers into the fold? Well, what's great is uh, we're getting ready to close on a $2 million round. Uh, so that's our first major round of investment. Um, that will allow us to really expand our marketing presence and our sales presence. So adding people in LA and Nashville, uh, potentially someone up in New York. Um, and then another interesting thing that we're looking at is to create um, a portal that's really either we're, we're still deciding whether it's around alternative investments or royalties as investments as a as kind of an aggregation point so that people can come and learn whether you're a buyer or a seller um, you know what it means to monetize your royalties or or how to uh, maximize your royalties because I think there's a lot of confusion of you know what should I do to try and maximize the royalties on YouTube you know is my content up there should I put my content up there so we we want to do a a lot of education, I think, as a way for us to go in and address the market. And then, of course, just doing the, the normal things you would do in marketing, for, you know, making sure that we're attending the events. We want to be seen as thought leaders in the industry. Uh, so making sure that we're, we're doing all of those things in conjunction. Yeah. And finally, I want to ask you about uh, so the, the royalty flow, of course, uh, after uh, the investor purchases a, a stake or an entirety of a song or a catalog, how do you track uh, what royalties are due back to them, just to ensure, I guess, that they are getting paid those royalties, especially if they only have a, a part of the track, and I guess the, the check actually still goes to the to the original songwriter. Yeah, sure. Great question. So we've invested a lot in the uh, the back end technology um, to allow us to ingest the royalty statements. Um, most of them come electronically, which helps out a lot. Some are still paper from the legacy, you know, record companies, um, and we take that all the way down to a song level. So not only will we be able to show you exactly what that individual song made, uh, but you can actually then see the underlying statement. So if you wanted to drill all the way back to the BMI statement or the CSAC statement, you can actually do that from inside of our system so that you can do your own kind of double and triple checking uh, to make sure that you're getting paid the right amount. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And uh, is it the royaltyexchange.com? What's the website? Yes, the royaltyexchange.com. Yeah, uh, go and check it out and uh, it's, it's a very interesting proposition uh, thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference in the next couple of days okay. thanks for your time as well if you enjoyed the show remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com